So today I'm going to show you how to install a GoTech uh, floppy emulator into an Amiga 2000. So I've, uh, as you can see I've taken the lid off and um, I've removed the accelerator card uh, that sits down in here in that slot there. I've also removed all the screws just to make it a little bit quicker to show you. Now I've uh, also disconnected the power to the main board, strip connector there, and I've also removed a floppy drive, the floppy drive uh, ribbon cable there from down on the main board. So this power supply and floppy unit just lifts out like so. And then the the actual floppy uh, carrier, it's four screws uh, holding the carrier in here to either side. Uh, and by the way, the power supply is held in by a couple of screws at the back there, two there, and um, uh, two down the front here as well. Yeah, two down the front. Okay, and then that whole, once you get these four screws out, that whole floppy drive carrier comes out. I've also disconnected the ribbon cable there the back of the floppy and that's the the back of the floppy there now I'm not sure how easy or how well that'll come out on the camera but you can see a jumper um, this, this jumper here uh, that's the one that's responsible for setting the uh, floppy addresses so drive floppy zero Drive floppy one, I think are the two options here. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it's actually set to drive uh, one at the moment because I'm going to set the GoTech to, or well, the GoTech by default out of the box comes uh, set to drive zero. So I've changed the jumper on this here to drive one. And the only other thing I had to do with the uh, GoTech was I just drilled these mounting holes out to three millimeters to to suit the little standoff post that I've got that's a fairly standard standoff post and then um, you can see the uh, the mounting holes there for it so I just sit it on there and hopefully everything lines up I'll screw that in and uh, I'll put it together and show you how it all how it all works Right, I've got the um, drive attached to the base carrier there, and uh, so just a matter of sitting it back into the power supply chassis. And um, so the cable, I've got the um, floppy drive cable here, which I'll Attach the uh, the first plug coming from the motherboard. So this this plug down here will be uh, attached to the motherboard connector. And uh, first plug here into the GoTech. And then a um, the second plug here. So that's the end plug onto the floppy drive. So now I'm just going to uh, put the whole power supply chassis along with the drives in, back into the case. Just hook up the uh, power for the two drives. And I've attached the um, mounting screws for the drive chassis there. And then just go ahead and plug the floppy disk cable into the main board there. Put this into position and attach the power cable for the main board. And then just gently get this into position here. Like so. Okay, so um, 
pretty much ready for testing there now. There's the card, so I'll, uh, yeah, I might put the lid back on. Right, I've got the uh, drive installed and the case and everything on there, so a um, little bit of a gap uh, between the front fascia and the GoTech there, just because the GoTech's a little bit uh, shorter than the floppy disk drive, but I might make up a little uh, piece of plastic there, but looks quite good in the beige, sort of matches the uh, colour of the Amiga 2000, although the front cover on this one is discoloured quite a bit, uh, it's gone a little bit yellow. Uh, but it certainly looks a lot better than the black one I had in there, so uh, that's good. So the default, um, when you have no uh, USB key drive in there, is just the dashes on the front there, and your standard boot screen. So um, you can just install the USB drive like so, and the triple zero is the Sort of like the configuration program that comes with it where you can uh, assign your ADF files that you you can put onto the USB drive from your PC or any computer really uh, in any modern computer to put the ADF files onto there and then you can uh, go to each of these slots so say slot 1 as uh, you, you you might assign to um, I don't know stunt car racer ADF disk and uh, slot 2 for you know civilization disk 1 s slot 3 for civ disk 2 disk 3 disk 4 you know for uh, civilization or any other ADF really so uh, so you, you just use the arrow keys up and down cursor keys to select these uh, slots here you can see mine are all empty there I haven't got any ADFs in there at the moment and if you use the right and left arrow keys you can scroll up a page at a time and you'll see that you know there's a lot of slots here so and it goes up to uh, 999 slots so yeah it's a fair few ADFs and left arrow key just to go back up again so I'll put some ADF files onto uh, the drive here and then um, show you how to assign the slots and, and what we do from there Okay, I've got the ADF, well, some ADF files on the uh, little USB key there. Uh, so now you can see we've got a, a folder on the USB key called ADF. That's just the folder that I created when I had it plugged into the computer. And I've put in a couple of uh, subfolders there, just S and W. So S, I've put Stunt Car Racer in there, and W, I've put Workbench. Uh, 1.3 and the extras disc and the two wings discs so uh, so if we wanted to assign the first slot in the selector to say workbench 1.3 we just hit enter on the W there and then down to workbench.adf and it switches us straight into the selector so I want to put that in slot 1 so just down arrow to slot 1 and hit enter and then uh, I want to put extras into the second disc and so down to the second disc and let's put wings disc 1 in slot 3 and wings disc 2 slot 4 I'm just going to go up to the double dots here to go up one folder and then down to the S folder and we've got a classic stunt car racer there and we'll put that in slot 5 and we go back up oh, up again or you can go right to the root if you go to the top here there we go, here we go. Uh, so one, once you've got your uh, ADF selected there you just go up to save and restart and you'll see the um, numbers counted up to number 1 that's just the default uh, disk it'll select so that that'll be that should be the workbench disk and there we go it's loading workbench 1.3 and once we're in there uh, put it, it just it just works like a floppy disk drive so you've got your down up and down buttons here uh, for just so what that does is it scrolls through that list 
that I was in before. So Workbench is in disc one, the extras disc is in uh, slot two. So if we wanted to get to the extras disc, we head up to go into the ex to load the extras. So that's effectively the same as just putting in the extras disc, taking the Workbench disc out because we're coming off one, and then inserting the extras disc. So if I did that now, so we've got Workbench 1.3 there now. So effectively it's pulling Workbench 1.3 out and inserting uh, the extras disc. And that should update there. There we go. Uh, workbench 1.3 is not actually available. Obviously um, it's, it's been ejected but it's still showing there. If I double click the extras there. There we go. And if we go up, we'll probably get what was the next one we put on there? Wings. Okay, so now it's asking for wings disc two, which I've got in slot four, so just up again to put four in it should detect that we've done that. Click. And it's pretty much the same speed as a floppy disk access, so there we go. This one again, so flip back nice and easy. Takes a takes a, a few seconds for it to detect. So I think we had in four, uh, five. Now I don't, I don't think that'll run from Workbench. So um, yeah, it's a non-DOS. Picked up as non-DOS there. So if I do a reboot now, with it selected on five, it should boot off. Uh, this is DF zero, so it should should boot off that. And there we go. Okay. So next thing to test is really whether these uh, drives are working. I'll go back to Workbench. Oh no, this one will work, but whether this one here is configured correctly, I'll soon find out. One problem I had with the old GoTech I had in here, I'm not sure if this one's going to be the same, whether they're same, the same firmware versions or not, was if I created an ADF of a blank disk and assigned the blank disk to one of those slots, let's say slot 6 on, the, on here and then I select slot 6 when in Workbench and tried to format it, uh, it would get part way through the formatting and, and then error. Uh, so I'm not quite sure why but I tried all sorts of different things to try and get that to work and it never did and I really just put that down to some sort of compatibility issue. I tried it on different computers and different models and whatnot and it did the same thing so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see if that works next anyway. Um, so I've got a, just a copy of Workbench 2.04 here just put into disk 2, uh, DF1 should be. Yep, looks like it. So if I do a DIR on DF1, accessing this disk here. Okay, great. And a DIR on DF0, accessing this one. So that's working fine. And we should be able to 
DF2. Yep. So that seems to be working fine. So I'll put a blank ADF on uh, the disk here, assign it to a slot, and we'll see whether that works. So to create or test um, whether a blank, whether I can format a, a, a slot as a blank disk, uh, I'm going to just sacrifice one of these. I've got copies of these. Uh, just, I'll sacrifice this um, stunt car racer here. I can just recopy that onto my computer. I'm going to put that into slot 6. And save and restart. And I'm going to, I'm going to boot into Workbench 2 from this DF1 here so that I can format this. So I'll just take that up to the Stunt Car Racer, the second copy of it, slot 6. Okay, now that Workbench is loaded there, uh, so slot 6, and we've got the, that'll be Stunt Car Racer, it's a non-DOS non disc. Uh, so, should be able to select it and format it. Please insert the disc be formatted in DF0, which it is. Okay, continue. Now this is where I had problems with the, the other one. It would get quite a way through, almost to the end, and just uh, stop with a CRC error, I think it was. So, hoping this will go fine. And it seemed to be formatting slower and then it would speed up a little bit each one of these cylinders would uh, kind of slow down a bit and then speed up and slow down so it's almost like there was a timing issue there but that seems to be quite consistent in its speed so I'm just hoping that will work uh, the reason I do this create uh, blanks on in extra slots is then I can put a, uh, a a real floppy disk into here that I want to um, copy out to ADF it's just a nice easy way I, I'm sure there are other ways of doing it um, there is an ADF conversion program for the computer as well so I might do a video on that uh, but this is a nice easy way of converting floppies to ADFs looks like it's going to work And promising. Okay, great. So there we have an empty disk. So if we go back to five, probably what have we got there? Yeah, so it's actually formatted the uh, it's formatted the stunt car racer dot ADF file that's sitting on this USB key as an empty disk so what I'll do is I'll rename I'll go I'll take this out put it into my PC rename that uh, stunt car racer dot ADF file to just blank dot that ADF or something like that and then I can just use that blank ADF over and over and over and just assign it to, to slots make copies of it and yeah so uh, that's worked really well so that's the uh, GoTech all installed and ready to go. So I might just tidy this up a little bit here. And um, yeah, thanks very much for watching.